Well, Matang, what do you make of this matrix, first of all? Uh, Trevor, let me first take the opportunity to say good morning to our viewers. Yeah. Uh, it's been a whole week and uh, we, we thank God that, that we're here. And uh, secondly, uh, and I know we are, com we are coming to the issue of the demise of uh, the, uh, sec the third president of the Republic of Kenya. Yeah, that will be our main conversation. Uh, I believe uh, we are coming there. But let me, let me also take the opportunity first to convey my condolences. I've done that, that in other platforms. Yeah. Uh, it is good to start with that on that note because, as you've said, it's a main subject, but it's also a big one. Mm. And then thirdly, on uh, this question of running mates. First, let me, uh, let me declare that I think on our Kenya Kwanzaa side, uh, I think we, we, we are not having this big problem. Uh, I've seen it depicted here on the newspaper, but if you've, you've been listening, and, and I don't think you've seen it either in the media, anyone claiming either entitlement or must do, uh, uh, largely it is speculation which is which is all right uh, you know by either the media and, and uh, the general populace who would be best fitting because it's a position that exists by percep by perception Trevor uh, mostly Kenyans have attributed the pers the person who op occupies an office with uh, the representation of the communities they come from and uh, hence I believe that this is one of the reasons why you find that there's a lot of there's a lot of interest in who is going to be whose deputy because uh, the question that lingers in people's minds based on our earlier thinking and, and, and inclination is which community then is going to be second you know, in that representation. That's why you probably find that there's that, that interest. Like I've said, from our side in Kenya Kwanzaa, uh, we, we, we are of a general consensus that one, and, and I believe that this is applicable across the board, including for positions of governor, is that uh, when you're thinking about a deputy president, yeah. uh, the, the, the candidate, our candidate for president, would largely be thinking about who is best positioned to deliver on the manifesto and the vision of uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, coalition, uh, you know, administration once it comes into place, yeah. and and the best person fitted for that for, for that uh, position should take the position, uh, you know, uh, in spite of other considerations. Every of all those persons that have been listed there and others not listed, mostly all qualify. And uh, what would we should be saying to? those that are aspiring is that there is nothing special about one person either being uh, given that opportunity to serve. There are others, hundreds of them, who are equally qualified and, and deserving. And, and that's why I would want to urge even those on the other side for the sake of uh, the unity of this country and also so that the administration that, that then comes in place can have its focus on service delivery and not on who sits in which position. Yeah. Uh, that uh, it is important to uh, ensure that as they engage in dialogue, which, which then forms the mindset and psyche of the country as we move into the next administration, and that we should not hype, we should not concentrate, we should not make a big deal out yeah. of uh, who is going to sit in these positions. But then uh, let, me, let me conclude by making just one or two remarks from some of the comments made uh, by uh, my colleagues. I think, number one, it is evident that uh, the weight of Kalonzo Musioka in the Kamba equation cannot, can, can no longer be, uh, you know, uh, gainsaid. Because um, if you look at what happened when he took time to, uh, to get into the Azimio coalition and agree uh, with them and, and, and generally be in, in, in the matrix, yeah. uh, a lot of effort was applied and uh, he's been pursued all over to ensure that he's in there. And that means that I think he's still uh, a very, uh, you know, poignant uh, player in, in Kamba politics. Uh, as, as, a, as my Attorney General uh, there proposes probably that maybe it is, it, it is uh, waiting in the wings for yeah. the other three players, uh, for, for Kalonzo to exit. But if, if you look at their, at, at, at their ages and even history <laughs> in, uh, in, in uh, politics, for example, between Charity Ngilu, Kalonzo Musioka, other than Kivuda Kibona, but also Kivuda Kibona, uh, my good friend, has also been public service for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that 
Kalonzo would be exiting to allow any of them in. They've equally been in public service for long. Gil Ngilo has been there for a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, so has Kivula Kibwana. And even the ages are complete. They, they all swing between uh, probably 67 to 70 years. You know, that's, that's the cycle of all, all of them, other than maybe Alfred, who is a little younger. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I believe in, in their matrix, uh, what, what would work best in, I, I believe, in, in for, for the sake of the Kamba community yeah. and integrating with the rest of the society is to, to, to have all the three uh, unified. Let me conclude my remarks by saying this, Trevor, that um, in the considerations for who would deputize a president, I think two factors must be remembered. One, uh, that person should have, and it is important for him to have a national appeal. Remember, this person is the principal assistant to the uh, president. And the president, as part of constitution, is deemed to be a symbol of national unity. His deputy must also have at least fair national appeal. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and also, of course, the mindset to be so, besides the local, you know, lo local appeal. Yeah. One thing that uh, Wakili needs to, to, to think about, uh, you know, and uh, especially when you become uh, the Attorney General in my, in my administration, is that we would need to spearhead yeah. a serious conversation that will see an amendment to our constitution that will allow a lawful, entrenched, and clear, clearly defined role of a deputy president and the functions of that office and the powers that, that are assigned to that office so that uh, that person does not in, at any other one time yeah. uh, you know, go through the kind of things that we have gone through. And we are not only singling out uh, deputy president William Ruto. We are saying that if you look at what has happened in county governments, uh, to deputy governors. The same, same problem has been there. You remember, and I, maybe I don't have to cite all of the cases, you remember the, 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 the fiasco between uh, Machako's governor, Alfred Mutua, and the first uh, deputy governor, Kiala, remember in Kiambu, remember in Nyeri, all over. It has been a big issue because you'll find that deputy governors uh, don't have a role, they don't have functions, they don't have defined powers. Yeah. And, and sometimes when the person who sits in those offices uh, does not have uh, the clarity of mind and intent yeah. to make use of that office and that person to, to deliver services, okay. then those offices uh, spike okay. uh, politics that are not useful All right. uh, in, in, in the country. So right. I think uh, we, we need to define yeah. uh, those, those functions and laws and, and, and powers in law. Okay.